Once uh, the hatches are closed on both sides of the docking interface, here comes Whitson for uh, final uh, farewells, final hugs, as she departs the space station 288 days into this mission. Yoda Yurchik in uh, patting the hatchway, as if to say, attaboy. Again, uh, the departing crew now back inside the Soyuz MSO-4. They'll close the hatch on their side of the docking interface. The same will be done on the Poisk module side of the docking interface. Then leak checks will be conducted uh, for a period of about an hour or so to make sure that we have uh, an airtight seal uh, between the two spacecraft before the depressurization of the small passageway between Poisk and the Soyuz spacecraft. The uh, departing crew will don their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits and conduct uh, systems checks and communications checks on those suits. And the Soyuz hatch closed at uh, 1.41 p.m. Central Time. So Whitson, Fisher, and your chicken now uh, ensconced inside the uh, Soyuz MSO-4 spacecraft will stand by for the closure of the Poisk module hatch. And the Poisk module hatch closed at 1.43 p.m. 
So the hatches are now closed uh, between the International Space Station and the Soyuz MSO-4 spacecraft, setting the stage for the undocking of the Soyuz to start the journey home for Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, and Fyodor Yurchikin. The uh, undocking scheduled about three hours and 14 minutes from now at uh, 4.58 p.m. Central Time, 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time. There is uh, Sergei Rosansky in the middle of your screen as he uh, ensured uh, the hatch closure on the Poisk module side of the docking interface uh, to the Soyuz MS-04. Randy Bresnik uh, with his back uh, to the camera and Paolo Nespoli with the video camera on the left side of your screen taking uh, imagery of uh, this first stage of the uh, departure of the Expedition 52 crew from the International Space Station. Indicator is not illuminated. And undocking confirmed at 4.58 p.m. Central Time. We are observing. As the International Space Station and the Soyuz flew 252 miles over southeastern Mongolia. The free drift uh, indicator is not illuminated. Guys, good luck to you on the station. That was Fyodor Yurchikin wishing uh, his colleagues good luck aboard the station. Again, undocking occurring at 4.58 p.m. Central, 5.58 p.m. Eastern, as the station flew over southeastern Mongolia, 252 miles above the Earth. We are observing the docking port. It is clean. Copy. So there are no foreign objects on the docking interface. Copy. I am standing by for the thrust of firing. Copy. The thruster has fired, the PO has fired. The uh, first separation burn is underway. Eight seconds. We have maneuver. Copy. Now the Soyuz into a roll program to reorient itself for the second of the two separation burns. Yes, the maneuver is done. We are standing for uh, standing by for the GSO of in attitude. Copy.
30 seconds. About uh, 25 seconds away from the second of these two separation burns. This one coming up will be 15 seconds in duration. So uh, a few seconds until the second burn. We have DPO firing. Copy. Second separation burn underway. You can see the thruster firings in this uh, image from uh, one of the external cameras on the International Space Station. Increasing the opening rate uh, for the Soyuz, where two orbits from now it will be in position uh, for the deorbit burn that will send it out of uh, low Earth orbit on the route home to a landing in south central Kazakhstan. Time. We are ready to uh, send the command G or Grigory 4 and TV deactivated. It's a go. In work. And there's our uh, video of the Soyuz MS-04 under its main chute uh, and the nominal venting of hydrogen peroxide from the thrusters. Everything is in great shape. Uh, we should be seeing the jettisoning of the heat shield that will expose the altimeter uh, that uh, will provide uh, altitude and rate of descent information to the Soyuz's computers. Everything is in great shape, just 11 minutes until touchdown. clearly saw the soft landing engines firing a second or two uh, before touchdown. And uh, there you see uh, the first of the crew members uh, coming out. That would be Fyodor Yurchikin. The uh, three crew members were extracted in fairly rapid fashion. Uh, with no issues associated. Uh, they are now inside the uh, inflatable medical tent at the landing site undergoing uh, initial medical testing. I understand. Uh, let's free up some space here. Uh, we put this down for the crew members. You can stand here behind the seat. Should I give you the baseball hat? Over here, over here. Here? Once again, uh, this is a replay of uh, the extraction of the crew, some of which we saw live uh, within the hour. That's Jack Fisher, of course, uh, back on Earth after 136 days in space with well. Fyodor Yurchikin. Oh. Peggy Whitson oh, was the last out of the Soyuz vehicle. She was seated in the right seat of the descent module. And here comes Peggy Whitson. So all three crew members now out of the uh, Soyuz MS-04. At the landing site, they should be uh, carried a uh, very short time from now into the 
inflatable medical tent for the start of medical testing and to get out of their Russian launch and entry suits. So let's move. Uh, who's going to uh, carry the commander? Hold on a second. One, two, lift. And your chicken now uh, being carried toward the uh, medical tent. And now Peggy Whitson being uh, carried uh, toward the medical tent right behind your chicken. Fisher will follow shortly. And Jack Fisher uh, being carried uh, toward the medical tent. All three crew members again will uh, doff their Sokol launch and entry suits and get into more comfortable clothing for a period of uh, medical testing. Peggy. Peggy. Okay, let's enter. 